Welcome to Ignite Success with First Coast Women. I'm your host, Snowden McFall, professional speaker, author, and coach. Here you'll meet incredible women who kindle new ideas, spark change, and fire up our community. Today you're going to learn all about how you can be a small business leader of the year, just like Tina Meskel. You'll discover how a brain bleed led Dr. Charu Raheja to develop a new mobile app that can improve your health. You'll find out how you can grow your business for free with the Small Business Development Center at UNF. And I'll teach you how to grow your confidence and be even more effective. So sit back, relax, and enjoy Ignite Success. Have you ever had a medical emergency in the middle of the night and you really needed to talk to a doctor or a nurse but you had no idea what to do? Well, in today's Fuel the Fire segment, you're going to learn all about how one woman, Dr. Sharu Raheja, was able to create a company that solved that problem and also another one. Welcome, Sharu. Thank you. Thanks for having me over, Snowden. So tell us about triage logic and what that does. How does that solve that problem of the middle of the night? You know, the triage logic is started off as trying to help doctors and hospitals keep people uh, out of the R if they didn't have to go there. Mm -hmm. So uh, a lot of times you might have a new mother with a newborn, for example, and the baby's crying. A lot of us have had that issue. Right. And, and we don't know if this is serious, does it need to go to the right. ER or not. And so you call, talk to our nurses, they evaluate your symptoms and determine the best level of care. The big thing about it is not only do we save ER visits, but we catch a ton of people who think they have nothing and they need, they're having a heart attack, Ooh. there's a meningitis issue, there's something, a stroke, something wow. serious enough that you need to go to the ER immediately. Wow. So I know your nurses handle 10,000 calls a month. Is yes, that right? actually 18 at this point. E 18,000. I know. And I, I think oh, wow. when I spoke to you, I said 10 and I looked at the numbers for last month and we we're up at 18,000. The demand is significant. And not only are hospitals and doctors looking into that, what's also happening is companies are saying, wait a minute, we want to keep our employees healthy. Mm. Why don't we provide a service like that? to our staff. Oh, wonderful. So it's a way for employee intention as well, retention uh, as retention, well. Retention, retention, keeping staff healthy and really saving money. Companies right. are a lot of them self-insured. And really, if you think about an employee, they don't want to be in the ER if they don't have to be there. Um, I was talking to a customer who uh, said, uh, you know, for, from an employee of a customer who said, you know, we're on the way to the ER. And my wife says, don't your company offers that app that has free nurses can we call the nurse and the nurse talk to them said no you don't need to go to the ER you need to see a doctor in the next 24 hours but go home so they turned around went home by the time they were home they already called the doctor which our nurse connected them to the doctor prescribed a medication and they were at home would, and relax so it saved time it saved ER visits saved money it was wonderful absolutely so what trends are you seeing in terms of medical calls? Are there certain things that are happening more and more that your nurses observe? Absolutely. You know, there are certain things and some of it, it's really tough. A couple of things. Number one is surprisingly to us, we tend to react quickly when our child is sick, mm -hmm. but we tend to not react when we're sick. Mm. Uh, almost as many. So we last month did a survey of our caller patients and we looked at adults only. Out of the adult callers, one in three who said, I don't think it's serious. I just think I'm going to stay home. Turned out they needed to go to the ER. Wow. Yeah. So you yourself were a medical victim. You had a bad headache for a week and it turned out to be a brain bleed. Yes. That's scary. Uh, it is. And you know, and I, it's like, I was like one of those adults, but right. I kept saying, it's just a headache. You know, people, are, I'm getting older. That's what a <laughs> migraine feels like now. I know what it's like. Yeah, right. So I started to, to ignore it for about a week until a friend, I called a friend of mine who was a neurologist and he said, I don't like the symptoms. Let's just get your brain checked. Turned out I had a congenital disease. Uh, I was born with a defect on my brain, which I didn't know. It bled. Did you know that half of the people who have that 
die within five minutes. Wow, you are so fortunate. I really am. blessed. I am. So you use that experience to create yet another company for a mobile app called Continuel. Is that right? Yes. So what I started thinking was, if it can happen to me, it can happen to anybody. And when we work with hospitals and doctor's offices, it's great, but not every hospital and doctor's office offers a free access to a nurse line. Whereas when we went to the employers, they're saying, okay, your nurses are completely independent. They're not associated with any insurance or anything that may make people suspicious. So it increases the likelihood that people call us. But at the same time, Companies are offering so many resources. They have telemedicine. They have wellness. They also have things like getting in touch with IT if you can't, uh, if your computer's not working. Yes. So what we're doing is we're consolidating all those resources, customizing it for a company, putting it all in a mobile app for the employee. Now the employer or the HR director, they can send push notifications. They can send videos. They can send all kinds of education material to keep people engaged, but the employee has all these awesome resources and access to our nurses 24-7. And we and we have a picture of that app, of the mobile app, and how it works on the phone. So somebody could actually go into their app and find out how many paid vacation days they have left. They could find out what their benefits levels are. They could find out any number of things about their company. Is that right? That's correct. And what the beauty of it is, is that we don't believe in one size fits all. So we will go to a company and we'll give them what they want. So we were talking to Stellar and we said, and Stellar said, you know what? Everyone is calling because they don't know how to get in touch with IT. Or maybe they would want to have PTO, pay time off, or right. maybe they want wellness. We put it all in one one place. Another company wanted safety checklist. So, so we put that in there as well. Exactly. So how can people learn more about Continuel? Well, go to continuel.com. Okay. That's the best way. Or call us. Uh, there is a tab there, contact us. And that's the best way really, because you need a demo. That's how we will explain what we can do for each company because we customize for everyone's needs. Thank you so much for being with us and for all the wonderful advancements. I'm so glad that you're healthy now. Thank you. <laughs> Me too. And coming up next, you're going to learn more about how Dr. Tina Meskel became the Small Business Leader of the Year. In today's Blazing Trail segment, we have Tina Meskel from Meskel Engineering, who has just won the Small Business Leader of the Year for the entire Chamber of Commerce for the greater Jacksonville area. Welcome, Tina. Thank you. So what's that mean to you, being Small Business Leader of the Year? Well, it's really quite an honor and uh, made even better by the really strong panel of business leaders that were in this friendly competition with the Chamber this year. So. How would another business owner who's think I was a small business leader in 2010, uh, so for Professional Women's Council, so uh, how would, thank you, so how would a small business leader who's out there now think about how they might be a small business leader, what has to happen to become one? Well, the program at the Chamber ha does have some uh, categories that you need to fall into, including being a member of the Chamber, a small business. Uh, the owner, who's the applicant, needs to be at least a 25% owner. Uh, there's some revenue guidelines and things like that. But yeah, that it's pretty laid out on the Chamber's website. And then you have to fill out an extensive application, right? It, it is, <laughs> it, yeah. It's quite a journey. But I will say that it was, uh, you know, it was rewarding. It You're was right. it, part of the process is is looking back at yes. at uh, how you got to where you are, and we don't always do that. We get you know busy and forget That's about right. how important that is. So it was a really rewarding process. But yes, it's it's a bit it's a bit grueling. Well, it, it is, and then you have to go through interviews. But it's yes. well worth it because I think business owners have an opportunity to really reflect on their goals, on what they've yes. achieved and how they've gotten there. And it's a very useful process. Absolutely. I think. Absolutely. I agree. So you're a woman who is thriving in a male dominated industry. Hmm. Has that ever shown up as an issue? Well, you know, I do agree with that. It is a male dominated industry, but it is, it is changing. 
Uh, I've been in this business for a long time, mm -hmm. and, and early on it was probably more challenging than it is now. Has it ever been an issue? Um, there have been issues along the way, uh, but it's not enough to, it's never been enough to make me doubt what I'm doing, and, and I don't think that would be true for women going forward either. I wouldn't want the thought of that to intimidate them about being in this business. No, and I think uh, we're seeing, we had a couple of women on, um, Tamara Baker. And, yes, I know uh, Tamara. Yeah, and, and Patella Bankhead yes. and what have you. And they and they both are thriving in, in, in male-dominated industries. And Absolutely. And I think you just lead with your excellence and that exactly. shines, right? That's exactly right. And that's sort of our, our, our motto is just we deliver on what we promise and just keep working at it every day. And you're doing some huge projects. So congratulations, yes. both nationally and internationally. Yes. We have a picture of a Puerto Rico project that you have going on. Tell us yes. about that. Uh, we are uh, we hold a contract with the Corps of Engineers, the Jacksonville District, which includes Florida, Puerto Rico, Caribbean, um, and we recently were awarded a, a task work order through our contract for some work in Puerto Rico that is very exciting. It's going to be the largest project we've ever done. That's wonderful. We have some um, some subcontractors in Puerto Rico. We're very excited about meeting them. We go down next week ah. to kick everything off and oh, have a meeting great. with the team, and we're very excited about it. So what size project is this? How many millions of dollars is it's it? A, it's a, over a million dollars for oh, us. That's and, wonderful. Um, it is an important project, really, for the people of Puerto Rico, too. Right. The Corps is straightening out a river that uh, runs north and south through Puerto Rico that is a, a big watershed, and mm. it's important for it to improve flooding and drainage issues for the people of Puerto Rico. So That's very we're important. We're excited to be a part of that. And then there's another photo we have of uh, the North Project, North Side Project. Tell us about that one. Uh, that's a picture of work we're doing on the North Bank. That is uh, Coastline Drive and Liberty Street improvements mm. that are going on downtown there now. And uh, we are excited to be a part of that project with GAI, a local civil firm, and the city of Jacksonville. And uh, right now they're doing pile driving for some new boardwalk wow. that's going mm -hmm. in, and it's fun. That is really fun. Mm -hmm. So what do you like best about your business? Gosh, you know, our work, the work that we do, which is geotechnical engineering, environmental consulting, uh, all of our projects are, are different. They're almost like, uh, especially on the geotechnical side, little puzzles that, uh, that we put together, every project being different. So it's exciting. Yeah, it's very exciting. So what advice would you give to other female entrepreneurs, particularly those who are maybe at a crossroads or starting out? What advice would you give them? You know, I think that if you are um, confident in your ability to do the job that you are going to tell people that you can do for them, you need to trust yourself mm. and and go out and just work at it every day and I think that's can be a bit of a challenge for us as women we get distracted with all the other things that we take care of in our lives and and maybe a little bit of self-doubt creeps in especially in my business which is as you said male dominated uh, but I think trusting yourself and uh, doing your best work every day is is the best advice you couldn't have said it better I'm doing a whole segment on confidence and self-doubt at the end of this show. So that's yes. perfect. It's so important for women. It's something that plagues Absolutely. all of us. Absolutely. So how can people find out more about Mescal Engineering? Well, our website is a good source of information. That's mescalengineering.com. Mm -hmm. um, that's probably the best way. Well, thank you so much for being with us. Congratulations on your award. Thank you so much. Are you looking for a new employment opportunity, an employee opportunity, a company vehicle, paid holidays and vacations, a retirement plan? Please visit jackshandymanjobs.com. That's jackshandymanjobs.com to learn more and apply. Do you have a new business that you're starting or is your business already successful but you want to take it to the next level? With me today in Success Sparks is Janice Donaldson. Janice heads up the SBDC at UNF and she's been doing it for decades and she has so much wisdom to share with us. Welcome Janice. Thank you Snowden. So I don't think most people know what the SBDC does so can you tell us please? Sure. 
Well, the SBDC stands for the Small Business Development Center, and we started at the University of North Florida in 1976. So we've been around wow. over 40 years. Wow. And primarily we were created to help people start businesses on the right foot and also to help people grow their businesses successfully. And so I know uh, myself, I've done some work with you folks and mm -hmm. you are a terrific organization, Thank great you. staff. Uh, you also have a scale up program. And who is that for? Well, uh, Scale Up has actually morphed into our SBDC. Oh. Um, and it was a special program for businesses with 500,000 or more in sales. Uh, but we still, in fact, Linda, who was the uh, director of mm -hmm. our Scale Up program, she actually does a program on scaling versus growing your business ah. um, because there is a difference. So, there is. Um, so primarily we provide help with, for startups, help with testing your market, mm. making sure the competition, you have something better than the competition, mm -hmm. what's going on in the industry, accessing capital for your business, writing a business plan, understanding the legal requirements, those kinds of things. And then for growing businesses, we have all kinds of tools and resources, market research, financial analysis and benchmarking tools. Uh, we even have an exit stage left program to help oh. businesses that are preparing to uh, exit their business. That's smart and help them with succession planning and right. all of that. Oh, right. terrific. So who are some success stories of local businesses that have worked with SBDC? Well, uh, we have a number of success stories over the years. Uh, people like Mike Zaffaroni, who was ah. the Florida, S Florida SBA uh, business Leader of the Year right. uh, this past year, uh, who owns Liberty Landscape. Mm -hmm. uh, we have people that have been around a long time and have used our services for a long time, like Andy Harold with a Harold and Associates, um, and a number of others. It, I'm hesitating because all of our services are confidential. Ah, so right. if you come to us and you receive assistance, we unless you do a success story and sign a release, that's right. Uh, we don't uh, reveal your name. So, that's right. Uh, so it's. Um, it's good because people want to come and they want to get uh, help and assistance and they don't necessarily want others to know that they are doing that. Well, and I think one of the things that most people don't know is that your consultants are really high level professionals who have quite a bit of expertise themselves. Yes, most of our consultants, uh, a majority have owned their own business. So they know what it's like to meet payroll and they know what it's like to be in the trenches. Uh, but they also have professional certifications uh, and stay up to date with professional development so that they know the latest trends. Everything from Google Analytics for right. e-commerce and social media and digital marketing to certified global business professionals for international trade to certified procurement specialists mm. for selling to the government. Uh, we have CPAs and CFPs. Um, but the difference is between what we do and what the private sector does is we don't do things for the client. So we don't do your taxes, we don't write your business right. plan. We try to help you find the tools and resources to be able to do that or to work smarter with your professional. So it's really about empowerment yes. rather than delegation, right? Yes, exactly. So you're teaching them to fish, as it were. Yes, <laughs> and exactly. To thrive, <laughs> and to thrive in their business. What exciting things do you have coming up? I know there's Small Business Week is yes, in May, right? in May we have uh, National Small Business Week and we'll be doing our 27th annual wow. uh, Small Business Week celebration on May 10th. Uh, we have a keynote speaker who started Maggie Salsa in Tampa and has sold it to Campbell Soup uh, wow. and can talk about that whole process. Uh, so that should be a very uh, exciting and inspirational story. So we're excited about that. And we'll also present SBA awards at that time as well. Mm, which is wonderful. Yes. Because you're so closely related to the SBA. Yes, we are a resource partner of the Small Business Administration. Which is wonderful. And I think a lot of people don't realize how much value they can get from the SBDC and how much you can help businesses. And it's a really high level of education, training, and resources that you provide. Yes, and all of the consulting is no cost. 
It's um, really, it's all free. Yes, that's kind of misleading because you've already paid for it with your tax dollars. <laughs> so, but anybody comes but, to you for any of your services, they're all yeah. no cost. The only exception would be like a, a training program, which might be, a you know, our how to start up your own business program that mm -hmm. we do once a month is $40 for the three-hour workshop. But everything is no cost. Yes, except that's for incre that training. That's incredible. Mm -hmm. That's what yes. a resource. So for any of you starting a business who have a business and you want to take it to the next level, the SBDC can really help. That's incredible. Yeah, so you. how can people find out more about the SBDC? Well, the best place to start would be our website, uh, sbdc.unf.edu. It has our whole calendar of workshops and our request for consulting form to fill out whatever um, and all of our services and many success stories. Oh, so, which is wonderful. <laughs> yes. So people can find out all about yes. that. And thank you for your 37 years of leadership. I know you're going to retire in a few years, yes, right? Yes, I so, am. Thank so we you. will miss you. Thank, thank you so you. much, Janice. Coming up next, you're going to learn all about confidence and self-esteem. Have you ever had the opportunity to do something way out of your comfort zone and you didn't feel like you could do it? Someone presented you with an incredible work opportunity or challenge and you doubted yourself. You just didn't have the confidence to make it happen. Well, that's extraordinarily common. So many of us doubt ourselves and have low self-esteem and that's just not necessary in today's world and women in particular are subject to this. I myself dealt with this as I grew up in an alcoholic family and in my early 20s really held myself back. And I discovered that there are lots of things you can do to improve your self-esteem and build your confidence and be a more successful woman. We have 75 to 80,000 thoughts a day. And sadly, for most of us, 70% of our thoughts are negative. We're judging ourselves, we think we should have said something better, done something better, we're criticizing ourselves, we're doubting ourselves. It's that constant mind chatter, and you don't need that. There are ways that you can actually change that. So often, people are doubting themselves because they're trying to please everybody around them and coming up short. People pleasers have a tendency to say yes to way too much and do too many things for others and commit to much more than they can actually accomplish. And then inevitably they fail and they drop the ball and they lose their credibility with the other person. Broken agreements destroy relationships and it destroys trust. So what's the solution? The solution is to not say yes immediately. <clears throat> When someone asks you to do something and you're not sure if you can do it, say, let me get back to you tomorrow and take the 24 hours to really think about it, look at your schedule, and then decide whether you want to commit to that agreement. And then once you do, write it down. Or if you can't do it, say that as well. We're usually pretty good at keeping our agreements with others, but often not as clear about our agreements with ourselves. And that can create self-sabotage. It goes something like this. You go to bed thinking, oh, I'll get up tomorrow morning at 5.30 and go to the gym. And then 5.30 comes and you roll over and you hit the snooze alarm. And you don't get up. And if you create a pattern of that, you start to destroy your self-trust. It undermines your confidence and you've broken agreements with yourself. And that really has an impact on your ability to believe in yourself. Again, the solution is to write down those agreements, don't commit to them unless you know that you can do them, and then set up a system of discipline where you actually do keep your agreements. People who keep their agreements have high integrity and believe in themselves, and I want that for you. Another way that you can build your confidence is to sit with someone who believes in you completely, it might be your partner, a loved one, or a dear friend, and do this exercise. It's called the three minutes of praise. You sit with them and you're going to do the same thing for them. So that's why they'll do it for you. You sit with them and they give you nothing but praise for three minutes. They talk about all the different areas of your life and you can probably record this. So that would be useful for you to listen to it later. All the areas of your life 
and they talk about what they admire about you and how they see you succeeding and what is special and unique about you. You will usually find that this is an astonishing and deeply moving experience because many of the things that we take for granted about ourselves, our innate strengths and abilities, we have a tendency to forget about or dismiss, and yet that's what others admire most about us. You do the same thing for the other person, and you may even choose to do this exercise with two or three people. It is amazing what it will do for you. Another tool to build your confidence is to take a look at the successes that you've had throughout your life. I always recommend to my coaching clients to take out a pad and write down all the significant milestones and successes and things they've achieved since they've been born. Learning how to walk, graduating high school, going to college, getting that first job, perhaps buying your first home, Whatever it is that you've achieved that you feel good about, write that down. That is now your reference points of success log. And whenever you're challenged and you have a new opportunity that you're not sure you can handle, you turn to that success log and you reference it and you go, okay, I did this, this, and this. I can handle this new challenge. It's important to give yourself credit for all that you do. I want you to be as confident as possible and achieve your dreams and keep your fire burning. This is Ignite Success with Buzz TV. We've had a great show today. You've had the opportunity to learn how you can overcome challenges as a small business leader in a industry that is dominated by men. Tina Meskel, who is this year's Small Business Leader of the Year for the entire Greater Jacksonville Chamber, shared with you some tips on how to do that in a male-dominated industry. You've also heard from Janice Donaldson from the Small Business Development Center about how there are free courses and trainings and consulting to grow your business and take it to the next level or even help you start your company. And Dr. Sharu Raheja has shared with you what has happened when she had a brain bleed and how she went on to develop a mobile app for companies to provide you with medical information and access to all different benefits that you have from your company. And I shared with you some tips and tools about confidence and self-esteem and why that's so important to your well-being. This is a show for women and about women. And we have a special event coming up May 19th and we need your help. We are looking for the top women igniting success in Jacksonville. And we have a nomination form on our website, thejacksonvillebuzz.com. Go there and look for the top women igniting success entry form and nominate a woman that you believe is igniting success in our city. Thanks for being with us today. We hope you take these tips and tools and ideas and ignite your success.